ಸಂಜ್ಞಾನವಾನ್ಯೋಗೀ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮನ್ಯೇವಾಖಿಲ ಜಗಾತ್ಮನ ಈಕ್ಷತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನಚಕ್ಷುಷಾ ಸಂಯಕ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನವಾನ್ಯೋಗೀ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮನ್ಯೇವಾಖಿಲ ಜಗತ್ ಈಕ್ಷತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನಚಕ್ಷುಷಾಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಐ ಆ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ for some not some for most of you all if not all is very familiar because a similar subject matter has been appearing in the 6th chapter of the gita where we are doing on sundays so the message comes there but this just gives us that wisdom is so universal where is adi shankar acharya and where is vyasa a different time different era yet the truth is something the substratum the commonness so the verse here he talks of the gnana chakshu i would not expand on the concept because the concept has been explained and you're familiar now the word uses the gnana chakshu the gnana chakshu is the eye of wisdom now as one spiritually evolves one gains this acute awareness an acute perception this is symbolized as the awakening of that wisdom how do you convey that wisdom how do you convey that perception that you look that you have a different perception that you look at things differently you have a innate eye to look at things from a different perspective how do you convey that the masters didn't know how to convey that so they said they put a third eye which is the so called third eye of lord shiva it's an objective representation of a subjective phenomenon it's an objective they put a third eye in between the two eyebrows where you actually put a tilak symbol symbolizing the awakening or the invoking of the self which is the divine perception it is an objective so objective when you put when you i'm sure you all have seen that third eye of lord shiva uh, uk you have seen you should be very wary of answering <laughs> namaste guru ji only in the photos guru ji uh, really see, I, 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 see very smart that's the reason the answer was <laughs> she said she, if she says yes next question will be where have you seen him and she'll get trapped so that's why she is only in photos <laughs> the amount of clarity you all have developed i tell you hats off to your clarity correct what did you see in the photos <laughs> harry ji is pointing or something <laughs> so what do you uh, notice there's a third eye longish third eye in between the on the forehead in between the two eyes in between the, between two, the two eyebrows in fact eyebrows yeah. yeah so that is that gnana chakshu which is that eye of wisdom it's only symbolic mm. but here is the philosophical understanding now what is that okay. what is that third eye in the context what is the vision of the third eye in the context what is the vision of the third eye ushama uk i'm still with uk okay uh, is it the wisdom guru ji it is no no as we have I mean, called that i that's the eye of wisdom so one who has that eye of wisdom the verse is saying something now my question is how does that eye of wisdom express in the form of intellect so the verse is not talking of that the verse mm-hmm. what is the verse talking of do you have the translation Enlighten- with you yeah enlightenment So Gayatri ma could you just for the benefit of her and everybody else could you share the verse again please Ushama 
Ushama, can you please read the verse for everyone? A sage of enlightenment sees through the eye of wisdom, the entire universe in oneself and one self in everything. Correct. Now, how does the verse qualify that, that wisdom? So you see yourself in everyone. What does it mean? It means you don't see the difference between yourself and the other person. Uh, it is the same uh, Atman which is there in everybody you meet or you come across. You see a common denominator. You see the yeah. self splashed in every object, every core, every yeah. object and being. The only thing is the Atman, the self. Isn't it? Yeah. Now, when you compare that to our individualistic perception, how do you differentiate our individualistic perception? Doesn't matter which degree you are, but our individualistic perception is how is it compared to the perception of an enlightened person? The Atman is the same Guruji, only whether you are able to perceive it that way or not, that depends on each individual. Your uh, yes. spiritual growth depends Correct. on that. So the perception of a person who has who doesn't have areas of that eye of wisdom is absent. Yeah. There is a perception of darkness or uh, I mean you selfishness or self-centeredness. No, 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 no. You're getting you're getting okay. slightly off off track. Okay. okay. I'm, uh, but no, what you have said so far is perfect. Rajima, what is that expression of that lack of that wisdom? You perceive otherness, Guruji. You don't see oneness, you see otherness. What is otherness here? That you are separate and the others are separate. Everything yeah. else is separate. You they start are seeing, you see a Plura correct. Plurality, correct. There is a plurality, means different names, different forms. You don't see everyone as one. Uh, in a simple example, you don't see 2,000 people in the organization as one. You see people based on their region, you see people based on their... When there was another organization in competing to a particular cause, the entire so-called team came together and fought for that common purpose. But when there was no common cause, come back to the individual politics of their departmental issues, personal issues, my priority, their, their preferences, there is that conflict. So he was asking... Why is it that like that? Isn't it? Long ago you had this discussion. How do you justify this? How do you clarify this? Hariji, how do you answer him? When there's a common cause which is not selfish or which is not oriented to an individual, then it's easy for everybody to align. The moment it is selfish, then it becomes personal to one and less personal to the others. So, so, so it's not that they, it's a different people. The same people became very cohesive. And at that time, the same people were non-cohesive. Isn't it? Am I right in using the word cohesive, non-cohesive? Where is she? Yes, Guruji. Commonality of purpose. So a simple thing like, like Tinkuma said, it is the intellect that conceives a goal. Once you have a common goal and align your actions to the common goal, instantly all the differences disappear. I, my organization my, must be the top. So everybody, all the people in the team integrated towards one common cause. There's no more politics internal, all you rise beyond your selfishness, your self-centeredness, the insecurities, all have to disappear. And I said that was a very good observation and a question he sought and we had a lovely discussion around that.
This is the solution, try. As long as you think beyond yourself, instantly there is no otherness. The more self-centered and egoistic you are, that much difference is everyone becomes your competitor in life. Everybody, every image, every reflection, sometimes your own shadow becomes your competitor. You don't see yourself in your own shadow. What sort of uh, grassness is that? Don't I see my own child as my own? My own? Imagine me competing with my own child. How is that possible, man? Why should I compete with my own spouse? Why should I compete with my family? Why should I compete with my colleagues? Why should I compete with my neighbors? Are we all not common? Are we all not one? Oh, he has built that house. I must build a house bigger than him. I must build a house better than him. I must buy a car better than him. Hey, yeah. What sort of mindset is this? Why is there that differences? This is the lack of this perception. And if you have that clarity, we know how much of differences are there in your bosom. You just have to be objective. The sad part is you're not objective to your own state. So you have people who agree with you, you are preferring them, who don't agree with you, you distance them. Why? Because you are not able to come. Uh, Ramji, why do you get close to people who agree with you and why you distance people who disagree with you? Uh, that is, uh, that gives you the comfort um, when you work with people who agree with you and it reinforces your own uh, beliefs and perceptions uh, and actions. Those who question you uh, will force you to question yourself and generally people don't like to question themselves and they would like to go with those who don't question. But what does it boil down to? You're right, but what does it boil down to? Let's say in a team, in a department. Uh, in a department, basically, it is uh, it is ego to a large extent. Ah, yes, it is ego, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A person could be giving an opposing view, which is in the interest of the organization. Would you put aside your ego and say, "I think your point is right. I could be the superior in this room. You may be challenging my view, but I think your view will." interest the organization in the long run. I would go with that. That's a true yeah. team leader. Absolutely. He's able to put aside his ego and take the team's view for the larger interest. It's not my view versus your view. It is what is the common cause we're working for. I tell you, if this spirit prevails in every action, by Joe, it's like an avalanche. Nothing can stop an organization moving forward because every force is moving you forward and everybody is thinking in the direction of moving forward. No, now the actions are full of collision. There's so much of disruption, interruption, and it's like having, I'm having barricades so that the force doesn't impact me. Isn't it? Like we don't, we have barricades or some kind of uh, devices so that the waves of the ocean doesn't hit the banks, especially in cities which are in the coastline. What do you call that barricade? What do you call, are they called barricades? Breakers. Breakers. Like we have speed breakers to break your speed, isn't it? So these are all self-created breakers which destroy your own self. It destroys others. It destroys the entire organization. So if this selfishness can be taken wow. out in the mindset of the employee, he will anyway be rewarded and paid for the services. But it's that spirit if you can embrace it gives so much of peace and comfort and it radiates that joy to others. I'm not just working for myself. I'm there for you as well. It's like, you know, when you go mountaineering, you uh, or even you even an army, you're willing to give your life for your, uh, what is it, your co-soldier, you know? You're willing to die for him. Uh, even in, especially in, when you're trekking and all, you know, and sometimes the other fellow pulls you up, isn't it? And if you, and you have to rely on his strength and faith that that guy is going to save me. You may not be able to do everything on your own. It's that kind of, uh, you know, that is the Jnana Chakshu. But Guruji, I think uh, in our system, right from the childhood, 
we encourage people to compete with others and we give marks we give ranks we, right through the student life we don't give any marks for team working we give marks for individual brilliance this is why i have seen this because i have worked with people all over the world that we are very good at individual brilliance but we are very poor at team working and uh, there are many countries where people are half our intelligence but they work better as teams and produce better results that is the, that is the you have answered it yeah uh, why are why is japan the power it is where we are yeah. because there is a oneness exactly so it is it is therefore there is every reason we should emulate what these principles are tried and tested truths it's not something which is being experimented on you we can learn from countries we can learn from principles being applied in fact i would go to the extent and say western countries are applying vedanta at the practical level therefore they are successful we are not applying these principles at the at the action level therefore we are not successful if we apply these principles at the material level we will have extreme success our actions have become industrious and efficient and also become peaceful because there is see sir japan i say have successful at the material level but they are not successful at the spiritual level because japan is the country which has the highest suicide rate highest suicide rate in the world is japan very industrious but there's no peace of mind to the cost of they destroy their own lives suicidal tomorrow it's it's very common they see some some worker has died on his desk they just remove and put another fellow there it's like your pc is burnt out you put another pc like that it's very common in japanese culture kudukushi this is the term they use kudukushi they commit suicide sir you asked you are, you are saying how our culture please i have i put it in caps in the chat box sir please can you read it for me the nature of sage is to act not to compete you are saying all our life from childhood we are told to compete 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 correct compare 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 i am better than you you are better than me so we have not been taught this wisdom and there's a beautiful exactly. saying the name the nature of a sage is to act and excel i have to act because it's my nature to act and succeed not because you are less or more why should i try to be more than you or for any reason other than comparison if i just be i am what i am that's the quality of a sage the nature and quality of a sage is to act and find the beauty in that grandeur of action it's a beautiful thing is just to do your action i am doing my action based on my dharma why should i compare myself with anybody out there and let me excel because i am doing my dharma let me be true to my nature my nature is not to compete but just to act isn't that a profound saying and if this our dharma we are proud to say to the world this is our culture we have lost our dharma we have lost our culture and if this culture can be injected to every individual and organization every walk of the way believe me the ripple effect is 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 enormous it's like uh, what is that wave tsunami mm. it's mind boggling effect it has transformation effect it has is mind boggling but you must believe in it you can't come with suspicion will it work is it safe you got to have the faith and believe and embrace these principles by jo it will work it's miracles it will work i'm only trying to tell the the the, the consequence of not having this wisdom in a practical sense in a, in, a, in, a, in an organization how we all we can have these issues people have these hiccups isn't it hmm? wonderful ramji uh, reddy garu thanks for raising that yellow hand <laughs> i just remember uh, guruji uh, in this context when you have been uh, mentioning the attitude of let the problem come from anywhere but the solution comes from me because the moment we come across with the problem so we start polarizing the problem which has come who has raised the problem where the solutions come from them so let the problem come from, from anywhere but solution comes from me if this is an one one is one somebody owns that and he keeps thinking that because the whole intention is to give a solution 
and not too much probe onto the problem, the source of the problem. So I, that has been implemented in the most of the cases where we're talking about the operational problems and the most of the intelligent people as uh, been discussed in the thing, we come across the ego is the most hurdle, the most challenging, and not the MBAs, not the CFOs, not the CEOs, all my case studies which put forward in a different forum is been all a burning, not an Ironman MBA, not I learned the lessons of the how to manage it. I, I learned the things from the scratch but I could see that the managing the people is the most challenging than the technology, than the business. Very true. It's not easy dealing with the egos, isn't it? Absolutely. Highly challenging. So I, I requested you also a couple of times, so whenever you take up the classes with these IITs, IMs, or the great MBAs and everything, first and most is how the self-management, not the business management. If you manage self, I think business can be managed very well. So it looks like you have stolen a lot of my material. Harishi, somewhere my material is leaking, sir. It's like a... Huh? This afternoon I was uh, talking about and he's already saying, Enna, Srinivasadikaru. Anyway, you are making a copyright, so I can't just keep... <laughs> ah, thank you, Ramji. See, now they're also noting it. The copyright is there. <laughs> No, I, absolutely, sir. In fact, you know, unless until we realize it, and 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 make every conscious effort to to bank on this principle, that as long as I cannot manage myself, there is no management out there that can be successful. In fact, I was just telling this afternoon that stress management is nothing but self-management. Everybody wants to manage stress, stress, stress. What is stress management? It really boils down to you managing yourself. If you learn to manage yourself, you can manage stress. Stress is nothing. A small aspect of your irritation is paralyzing you. It's like a small virus is creating havoc in the world. A small, a small agitation in your mind has ripple effect. It becomes so strong that it, your actions become immobilized. That's stress, isn't it? What is stress? A minor irritation goes beyond proportion. You become incapacitated to act. Huh. You can't deal with a minor irritation, a minor annoyance, or a minor frustration, or a minor dislike, or a minor impulse. You can't handle it. And you allow that to go Beyond your control, remember the famous words of the Gita, buddhi nashat pranashati. Pranashati is destruction going on because you are not able to apply your own intellect to manage your own self-created ruptures. You are rupturing yourself with the world because of your inability to deal with it. Don't blame the world for God's sake. It's a beautiful place. It's a heaven out there. You don't know how to live life and you're blaming the world. You don't know how to drive and you're blaming the traffic out there. You're having serious accidents. Stress is nothing but mental accidents you're having because you don't know. You don't know how to deal, how to manage yourself. Rightly said, sir. Manage yourself. But here the verse talks of that sage of complete enlightenment. They are a very high level. Total enlightenment. A man of that enlightenment, with that eye of wisdom, he sees the Atman everywhere. It just gives us a, 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 an idea as to where we stand and where is that man of wisdom. Where is that sage? <laughs> he just gives an idea. Uh, I'm not saying we are at the level where we discussed, but I'm saying somewhere we are caught up in differences. Somewhere we are, our ego is still hurting you. Somewhere down the line, it has become a bottleneck in your pursuit. You got to get clear that bottleneck, clear that aspect of ego which is hurting you and move on. See the oneness there. All right. We shall come back. We'll continue. Om Purnamada
ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದಂ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಕ್ಷತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ